Jesus. All right, here we go. Quiet. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. The desire for improvement is very strong in all of us. We'd like to do better than we're doing, or eat better, or read better books, or get a better paycheck each week. And if we have children, we would like our children to have all the benefits we have and all those things we wanted but couldn't get. A good point of conflict in such a situation would arise when a parent wanted something for a child and the child didn't want the same thing. And that's the point to Richard Chandley's play for tonight. It's called Giant's Fireplace. They say it was the heat that made John Walski do what he did. John was the blower, the boss of number four blast furnace down at the mill. A big difference from when we was all kids. Back then, he was always saying they'd never catch him getting his hands dirty, working heat all his life like his old man. Oh, he was always talking big. Then one day, he come in the bar here, said he was married, working at the mill, just temporary. Can't even remember her name now. She died when the boy was born. John brought up Russ himself, worked hard at it, right up until Russ was old enough for the Army. I remember Korea was on then. We gave him a little send-off here in the bar the night he left. <laughs> hey, Russ. Hey, Russ. John, will you get your boy to listen to me, huh? Russ, listen to Water. Uh, yeah, Water, go on. Now, just don't let him sell you a bill of goods. Remember, keep your eyes open, your mouth shut, and never volunteer, huh? <laughs> and if you go in the line over there, keep your feet dry. I had to learn that the hard way. Hey, Stan, where's the next round? Coming up. Wait a minute. Lousiest service in town. When are you going to hire somebody, Stan? We better get down to the train, Russ. Hey, wait a minute. You ain't even had a beer. No, no beer. Not yet. So he ain't 21. He's had beer before. Come on, John. He's going in the army. In the uniform, it's okay, but not in public around here at least 21. I'll buy that one myself. You won't have to buy it. It'll be on the house. On the house? Why, you tightwad, you wouldn't even hire anybody to help in here. Yeah, one of these days I'll surprise you. Come on, we gotta go, Russ. Okay. So long, Stan. All right, now, just you remember to write now. We want to hear from you. And be sure any steal I give you comes from number four, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and watch out for the day. I will. So long. What's the time? Uh, ten of. Train pulls out at eight. Guess the house will seem kind of empty for you. You right. For sure. Probably won't be anything to do where they send me, except right. If they send you to Korea, you take care of yourself. Don't worry. First day you get back, you sign up for college like we planned. I mean it, Russ. They give you the GI Bill, and you're going to take advantage of it. I don't care what you choose, engineer, doctor, lawyer. Maybe the Army will help you find out. Russ, you hear me? Huh? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just one more thing. What? Uh, women. You might start thinking funny things. I mean, you might think you want to get married or something. <laughs> Not me. Just remember, you got a big life ahead of you, Russ. You can be somebody. Important. You don't want to let nothing stop you. Sure. Uh, you got your ticket? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, here it is. Russ, you and I always been together up to now. Remember what I said. I'll watch out. And you take care of yourself. Oh. You better go. Okay. So long. Be seeing ya. Oh. You couldn't see much change in John, even after Russ got to Korea. Oh, he'd come in here after work as usual, sort of a tradition for steel men who work the hot jobs to go for a drink when they come off shift. Something to wet down the heat. But outside of that, John just kept to himself. Ah, that's good. <coughs> oh, boy, have I been waiting for this. Yeah, hot today, huh? Want another round? That's a question I'm not even going to answer. Stella. Yeah? Say. Three beers on tap, nice and cold. Be right there. Now, who is that? Mm-hmm. You guys still want to complain about the service? You mean you broke down and hired somebody? Uh -huh. I'll say you did. Get a load of that, will you? Stan, I'll tell you something. All of a sudden, I'm getting to like this place. Here you are, gentlemen. Three of the coldest. Hello, Stel. Uh, listen, honey. 
What time you get off? Hold that, Stan Harder, for me, didn't you, Stan? Just settle down, boys, and drink your beer. <laughs> I'll uh, tell you right off, Stella. Both these wise monkeys are married. Stan, what'd you do that for? Oh, don't let it worry you, Stella. My wife's very understanding. Well, aren't you lucky? <laughs> right there, ain't she? You? You're okay, Stella. Thanks, lover. Who's the gentleman here? Oh, this is John Walski, Stella. Hi, John. Hello. No, he ain't married. Yeah, but he was once. He's got a kid in the service. Don't kid me. He's not that old, are you, John? I got a few years. Hey, <laughs> you must live right. Well, I hate to leave, but I got to get home. Yeah, me too. John, will you stay and have something to eat with me? Thanks. I got some things, Stan. Let it right. I got a steak. Come on, help me eat it. Well, okay. Let's go, Wanik. See you tomorrow, John. Hey, Stell, don't go away. I'll be back. Lover, I can hardly wait. <laughs> You're okay, kid. I'll see you. Another beer, John? Okay. You really got a boy in the army? You have to be an old man. No. What do you do at the mill? Blower, number four furnace. Big shot. Not a big shot, just a blower. You're not married anymore? What is this, the third degree? I'd just like to know the customers. I'll get you that beer. Then I'll find out all about you. Okay. Okay, Stell. And that's how John met Stell. Well, they sort of liked each other right off. I thought it was a pretty good thing then, for Stell, too. She was always joking with the boys, but if you looked deep into her eyes, you could see she had a loneliness, too. Anyway, they started going out. After a while, it got pretty regular. Oh. All set to go? Okay. That a new dress? Mm-hmm. You look good. Thank you. What do you want to do? Oh, it's a, kind of a nice night. How about just walking? We'll look at the sights. <laughs> sights? The dirt, the mill. Furnaces, the way they light the sky. I think it's pretty at night. See? They look like giants' fireplaces. The smoke turns into the giants, you see it? It's heat and dirt. Use your imagination. It's a mill. I see it every day. You don't like the mill, do you? I work there. I got to see giants, too. Why do you work there if you don't like it? Because it's what I know. Because once I was young and I had ideas, then I had to go to work. Talk something else. John, why don't you let down the wall? I won't hurt you. Hurt me? Oh, we've, we've seen a lot of each other, but it's, it's like something inside you says... Let's go around, but don't get too close. I just got things on my mind. Plans. They've been there a long time, that's all. Your son? Isn't there room for anything else? Listen, don't you have fun with me? Well, sure. Well, what do you want to get serious for? I'd just like to know where I stand. Come here. Stop it. We're on the street. <laughs> you big monkey. You wanted to be close, didn't you? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Just a girl looking for something. I haven't found it yet. Look, I got plans, Stell. The boy. I made him a long time ago. That's all I got mine for. Nothing's gonna change. I can't think anything else. I know. We can still have fun, can't we? Sure. Okay, sure. We can still have fun. <clears throat> it was last June when Russ came home from Korea. The night before, John had himself a celebration and tied one on. It was just sort of a big relax. First time he'd done it in a long time. Then the next morning, he went down to the station, met Russ, and brought him home. Same house, same everything, just, just like when I left. Good to be home. Sure. Funny, though, it feels kind of different. What do you mean? <laughs> Nothing, it's just me. They had me hopping around so much. I guess it'll take a little while before it feels like being home. You just need to get busy. I got something for you. Th those pamphlets? From the college, one on every course they got tells you what to study. I read some. They write it up pretty good. Law, medical, 
Whatever you decided, I got them all. We can go over. Hey, I just got home. Give me a chance to sit down. You've been thinking about what you're going to study, haven't you? Oh, sure. I've thought about all it. All right. What'd you pick? I, I guess I don't know yet. What do you mean? Well, I, I, I don't know. Look, I just got you home. You had two years, Russ. Well, sure, but it wasn't all my time. There was a lot going on. Can't you understand? You're going to school, Russ. You better make up your mind. All right. Just, just... Let me get the feel of being home again. I'm not going to start tomorrow, am okay, I? Okay, this is June. By September, you're going to know? Oh, I guess so. It's just that... No, oh, I don't know. It. It's hard to explain. Find out about that GI Bill? You do it through the Veterans Administration. Okay, just so you know. Told Stan I'd bring you by tonight. Swell. You better go get ready. A jolly good fellow which nobody can deny. <laughs> hey, how about that? How'd it sound, Russ? All right, thanks. The least we can do. Yeah, pretty good having him back, huh, John? Yeah, pretty good. I better get back to the counter. Glad you come by, Russ. It's real nice to see you. Thanks, Stan. Well, tomorrow's a working day. Hey, Stow! What'll it be, gentlemen? The same? Yeah, we gotta go. What's the bad news? That's okay, I'll get it. Oh, now, wait a minute. Oh, sorry, oh, boys, he beat you to it. <laughs> oh, well, that's different. <laughs> hey, Stowe, well, what do you think of John's kid, huh? Well, like I said before, he's not so much of a kid. It's nice to finally meet you, Russ. I've heard a lot about you. I hope I see you again. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be in, thanks. I'll get your change, John. You keep it. Thank you, sir. Night. Let's go, Waddick. We'll see you, Russ. Glad you're back, kid. And, uh, thanks for drinks. Yeah. You feel more like being home? Yeah, I, I guess. Well, let's go. I gotta get up early. <laughs> look, uh, I think I'd like to go for a walk. A walk? Just look around for a little while. It's late. You can do it tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to do it now. Look, Russ, I'm still your old man. I've been taking care of myself for two years. You mind? All right. You take your walk. Russ? Is that you? Hmm? Oh, hello. Oh, I thought so, but I wasn't sure. You just walking? Yeah. Looking things over. I live in the next block. Mind some company? No, I'll be fine. Okay. See many changes since you left? Looks the same. I guess I'm the one who's different. It'd be pretty funny if you weren't. What? Well, you can't be off in a war without something changing, isn't that right? Yeah. Why doesn't he realize that? John? Yeah. When I come home, he treats me like I was when I went away. Just, just like I've been down at the corner or something. Because nothing's changed for him. He wants you to go to school. You know about that? I've heard a lot about you. John wants a lot for you, Russ. I get the feeling he doesn't care what I want. And what's that? <laughs> Guess I don't know yet. <laughs> You'll find it. Just so you're happy. This is where I live. I like talking to you. Could, could we do it again? Sure. I've liked it, too. You're pretty nice. You're pretty nice yourself. Night. After that first night, I don't think Russ and John were in the bar at the same time again. Russ was in a lot, but usually around closing time. I never thought anything about it. None of my business anyway, but he talked with Stell. A lot of times he'd walk her home. Here we are again. Thanks for the company. Uh, you ever notice the mill? The, the fires, I mean. Kind of pretty at night. Mm-hmm. Giant's fireplace. Yeah, that's it. I've noticed another thing. This walk is getting shorter and shorter. I've noticed that, too. Night. I'd like to talk some more. <sighs> I gotta go in. Next time.
Don't you think you're seeing an awful lot of me? Do you? Well, that, that's... that's not fair. I... Look, you, you're supposed to be making up your mind what you're gonna do. I am. You said just so I'm happy. You don't want me to make a mistake, do you? No, no. No, I don't. I've been watching Bill and Wadick. They're married, they work, and they're happy. Russ... I'm pretty sure still. How about you? Oh, Russ, please, don't get serious. It's... it's not right. Do, don't you like to be with me? Yeah. I must be crazy. Why? Because I'm looking for something, too, Russ. And... I'm vulnerable. Yeah? Going out? Yeah, I was. I want to talk to you for a minute. Come here. Okay. What about? They open up registration for college next week. I left you alone to figure it out. You want to tell me what you choose? I got a right to know, ain't I? Sure. I'm not going. I applied for a job at the mill. You what? I'm going to work. I'm going to get married. Mar who? Stell. Stell? You're kidding. That's what you've been doing all this time, all these late nights. Look, look, I know how you feel about so college. So you think you're going to marry Stell, huh? Go to work in the mill. Well, that's where you work. What's wrong with it? Be a Joe Blow in the mill the rest of your life. That's what's wrong with it. She got her hooks into you. It was her idea, wasn't it? It was my idea. It's what I wanted to Listen, do. Listen, I'm going to tell you something about Stell. You and her? I know. She told me. It's my life. It's what I want to do. Get it out of your head. You're not going to wreck yourself on a dame like that. Don't talk like that. You're not going to do it, Russ. You're not going to wind up a nobody. A nobody? Well, what are you talking about? Have I got to say it? Look at me. Can't you see? Oh, there's nothing wrong with you. Then I'll show you. A whole life. I can't talk. All I know is... All I know is my hands. I'm not going to marry her. That's for sure. Is it? John? What's happened? What is it? You got him, didn't you? What? You were going to get somebody, so you picked him. Wait a minute. You mean Russ and me? You got him where he wants to marry you. You know that? It's not going to happen. You understand? You're not going to wreck him. Wreck him? I planned a big life for him. He's not going to throw it away now on you. Now you shut up a minute. I know what you think. Marriage is a trap, isn't it? Because you got married, gave up your, your ideas, got cheated. You just gave up. So now you're going to live Russ's life, live inside him, make him be what you want to be. Keep away from him, Stella. You don't care about Russ. You don't even know that he's grown up, that he's a separate person with a right to his own mind. All you can see in him is you, ready to start a life again, another chance for you. That's what you planned, all for yourself. Not Russ. So now you take him, huh? All for yourself. That's what you planned. Go to work in the mill, Russ. Then you can have me. That's what you told him. That's all there is to life. The mill and Stella. No! Leave him alone. I'm warning you. I, I didn't plan this, John. We love each other. You, you, you don't plan love. You leave him alone. John! You're hurting John. Why, what's the matter with you? Stella. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Stella. Let go, John. You've got to learn to let go. Stella. You and Russ. Help him. Talk to him. I don't know how. It was last week Russ and John came in together. Sort of a celebration. Russ's first day at school. He's taken metallurgy. We're all pretty proud of him, too. But today's the big day. I gotta close the bar now for maybe an hour. There's a wedding just down the street. 
John's the best man. They asked me to give away the bride. That was Giant's Fireplace, and it was written for us by Richard Chandley, who thought it would be nice if we didn't play a married couple one week. <laughs> the story was told to you by Jerry Hausner, who owned the bar frequented by William Conrad and Byron Kane. And your son, who was able to make the compromise, was played by Lee Millar. Thank you all. Next week, a new radio play by Thonis Calhoun who started his radio writing here on stage, and we hope will continue for a long time. It's called The Fork of the Road. It's very good. Until next week, thank you for listening, and good night. Good night. <laughs>